Welcome to today's webinar on Southwest Minnesota Arts Council's Grants for Individual Artists for Fiscal Year 2020, which for us runs from July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. I am Carolyn Koska, the Financial and Grants Administrator here at Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC. Um, today, we're going to start out talking a little bit about SMOC. Uh, we'll look at the guidelines for these particular programs for artists. Um, we'll show you what is available for you on our website. We'll go into our online grant system and look at all the application questions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the grant process, basically what happens once you submit an application. Um, and then we'll have some time for some more discussion and questions at the end. So right now I have everyone muted. Um, if you have some questions as we're going through the presentation, please feel free to type those into the chat window at the side of your screen. I'll kind of watch that um, and try and answer those during the presentation. I will stop a couple times and unmute everybody if you have any questions there. And again, I will unmute you at the end of the presentation if there's anything else you'd like to talk about. So the Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC, is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting and encouraging the development of the arts in the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota by serving as a source of funds and technical services which enable local organizations, educational institutions, and individuals to sponsor, create, and promote the arts in their communities. We are one of 11 regional arts councils that cover the state of Minnesota. So here's our area down here, the counties that we cover. Our funding comes from the state of Minnesota, both through a general fund appropriation from them and the Legacy or Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, and also from the McKnight Foundation. Some things that we are committed to include supporting artists and arts organizations in creating, producing, and presenting high quality arts activities, overcoming barriers to accessing high quality arts activities, instilling the arts into the community and public life, supporting high quality age appropriate arts education for all ages to develop knowledge, skills, and understanding of the arts, and supporting events and activities that represent the diverse ethnic and cultural arts traditions of the region. So these are just some things to keep in mind as you're thinking about types of projects you might like to do because they all need to relate back to these commitments. Um, we'll be talking first about two of our programs together, the Individual Artist Grants for Emerging Artists and for Established Career Artists. Um, we're going to talk about these together because the programs are very similar, and we'll also talk about what is different about those. So these grants are open to residents of our 18-county region who are 18 or older. They need to be a resident of the region for at least six months before applying and also remain a resident of the region through their grant project. Uh, funds may be used for a couple different purposes here, either to help in um, increasing the public awareness of your work or projects that will um, help you progress in your artistic development or professional career. We really want these funds to help you be able to just focus on creating whatever is in you to create rather than having to worry about, is this something that will sell? And we really also want these grants to enable artists to live and work in our region. For these grants, all arts disciplines are accepted. Types of projects that you could do include purchasing supplies that you need to complete a body of work, compensating yourself for your time while working on that, uh, going to a workshop or conference or taking a class, a one-on-one -on -one study with a mentor, developing a portfolio, um, renting space either to uh, present your work or if you need um, studio space for this, um, particular project that you're working on, 
Um, you can request daycare costs while you're working on your art. Um, it can also pay for things like framing, recording, editing, research. Um, and as it says here, they may include these things, but not limited to. So I'm sure you have um, lots of other ideas as well. Uh, I see a question that has come in on our chat. Are you able to send this webinar via email with grant requirements? Um, we will be posting a recording of this webinar on our website um, probably sometime next week. That will be available. Um, and I'll sh also show you where on our website all of the um, guidelines information can be found. So here is the thing that differentiates these two grants. Um, you've got kind of a continuum for starting with an emerging artist all the way over to an artist that has um, an established career. So um, emerging artists um, would have limited but promising uh, performance publishing or exhibition record, and they're really at an early stage of their career development. Um, to be considered an established career artist, we're looking for significant artistic accomplishments that you are being sought after for solo shows or performances and are recognized by artistic peers throughout the region and state. So some other things to um, think about when you're trying to decide which um, category to apply under. Um, if you're not really sure, you can talk with us and see if we can help you determine which one you fit under best. Or um, if you're still not sure, it's a good thing to start with applying under emerging because as a first time applicant, um, you'll have a better chance being funded under the emerging first. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is sometimes artists have an established career in one discipline or medium, but they may apply as an emerging artist in another if it's something new that they're trying out and don't have as much experience in. So this would happen if somebody has been has a really established career as a painter and they've decided they want to move more into sculpture and need some classes or other supplies for that. So they might, even though they might apply for a painting type project as an established career artist, they might apply um, as an emerging artist in this other medium. So we're mostly differentiating these two based on actual um, career steps. But also um, our grant reviewers are going to be looking for a more developed vision or skill with the established career artists. So if you look at um, an artist resume that you have, the accomplishments that you have documented there, that's really going to help you determine which category that you will fit in. So our grants for emerging artists are available for up to $2,500. And established career artists can request up to $7,000. And for both of these, there is no match required, um, which means that you would not have to put up any of your own funds toward the project. Some things to be aware of about eligibility. And this is a whole list of things that are not eligible for these grants. Uh, projects that are intended for mass market distribution or other um, really commercial activities. Projects that include publishing initiated solely by the applicant. Equipment requests that aren't uh, tied to the specific project that you're doing. Uh, credits or materials necessary to fulfill degree requirements for students. Um, in other words, a college student would be eligible to apply for one of these grants, but it would have to be a completely separate project from anything that they are working on in their degree. Also not eligible are applications that are mostly about developing curriculum plans or teaching materials 
and that are really focused on advancing your teaching career. Um, in this instance, we really want people to be focusing on their own div individual artistic development and career, not on their teaching. Also not eligible are projects that don't have an art focus, requests for new building construction or purchase of real estate, activities for the religious socialization of the participants or audience, activities that attempt to influence any state or federal legislation, uh, payments of any debts incurred before the grant begins, or if you still have a grant project going with us. So we just request for these individual grants that you finish one grant project before applying for another. So um, it's good to just check the guidelines for these specific programs along with we have some general grant guidelines that apply to all of our grant programs and I will show you later where you can find these. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a third grant program that we have for individuals called the Individual Artist Community Collaboration Grant. Um, it is not available in this round that is coming up. We have already expended our budget for this program, but I just want to talk a little bit about it in case it's something you might think about doing in the future. Again, open to the same group of people, those over 18 in our region. And this program, um, is about funding projects that bring an artist and a community together in a creative and collaborative relationship. And we're looking for an impact both on the artist and the community. Like the other grants, it may include any art form. And it's really a dual focused project. We're looking for an equal focus on one, the artist um, working on their own artistic development by creating a new work and also their collaboration with the community. And we're looking for them to introduce um, a segment of the community to an art form that they may not normally be exposed to. The project really should be focused on um, reflecting the character of the community as well. Uh, for this program, the artist needs to have an active community partner that will help them with the project. Um, some examples of who that could be would be a city government, chamber of commerce, an arts council, a historical society, or some other nonprofit organization. We do um, request that it not be a school. Um, so the community partner would be able to help with maybe providing some space for the project, doing some advertising, maybe being a connection to the people that you're trying to reach just to support the artist in this project. The community collaboration grants are available for up to $10,000. And again, no match is required. The artist does not have to put up any of their own money. In addition to those eligibility items that we mentioned a little bit ago for the other two individual artist grants, these items are also not eligible for the community collaboration grant, which would be fees for entering competitions or shows, taking classes or workshops, doing any traveling for research, activities that are taking place outside of the state of Minnesota. Um, this particular grant uses funds that come from the state of Minnesota, so that is why they request that those funds are spent within the state. Our other two programs that we just talked about are funded through uh, monies from the McKnight Foundation. Um, so also not eligible for these community collaboration grants are activities that are not open to the public, requiring artists to pay excessive fees and educational projects within a school system. We have a separate grant program for schools that we want um, them to utilize that rather than just focusing on work in schools here. And again, you can check both those program and general guidelines that we'll take a look at in a little bit. For all three of these artist programs, you have two dates that you're gonna need to come up with. Your start date, so that would be as soon as anything starts towards your project. So even things just like ordering supplies, if you're registering 
for a conference that you're going to, um, booking your travel for a research trip that you're going on, um, doing any advertising. So you cannot spend any of the grant funds before the project start date. Um, if there is something that needs to be paid for before that date, if you have to put a deposit toward your workshop registration, for instance, um, you would have to exclude that amount from your grant project budget. Um, and again, no advertising before the start date. So with all of that in mind, your start date should not be the date of your first activity or event, because that would not allow you time to do any of the preparations. Then you'll also need to choose a project end date. So think about at what point might I have all my bills in and paid, everything wrapped up, keeping in mind that you will have time after the end date to complete a final report. So deadlines for these two, um, three actually grant programs, we have two rounds per year. Um, the first round was in August, um, that has already passed. And round two has a deadline of January 8th for projects starting March 1st or later. So that's where you have to uh, make those considerations about what are you going to choose as your start date and will it allow you enough time to do any preparations that you need. Um, and again, noting here that this round two, there are no funds available for the artist community collaboration grants. All applications are submitted online and must be submitted by 4.30 p.m. on the deadline date. The system actually will not allow you to submit if it is past 4.30. So that's something to keep in mind as you are working on your applications. Any questions so far? I will unmute you for a little bit or if you would rather type something into the chat box, I'll just wait a few minutes. I'll just wait for one more minute here if you have any questions and then in a little bit we will go on and see what is available for you on our website. All right, we are gonna go over to our website. Um, there are a couple of places from the website where you can access our online grant system. One on the home page in this black grants box, there's this login button right here that will take you to log into the grant system. Otherwise, there are also links available on each of the pages for each of the individual grant programs. So we're going to take a look at our page for Emerging Artist Grants. Um, here, like I said, is that Apply Now button that will take you to the online grant system. It does just take you to the login, so you don't have to actually be applying to follow that link. So on each of these pages, you'll find the specific guidelines for this grant program, along with the general grant guidelines that apply to all of the grant programs. We've got the application questions that are in an editable document for working on a draft. Some people prefer to work in that document and then paste their answers into the online application later. Others like to just work right in that online application. Either way is fine, but we have this available for you. Um, the budget form is available here, although you'll also be able to access that in the application. Here is a list of the criteria that the grant reviewers will be using to evaluate your application. And we'll talk about that later on today as well. Um, and then just a couple of tutorials for you. One, a very brief overview of getting started in the system. And then there's this uh, PDF that is a more detailed guide, kind of tells you what all of the different buttons do in the grant system. And then you'll see below, we have the rounds listed. Um, so here is listed our application deadline when the grant review panel will discuss your applications um, and all of the 
other dates that are involved there. This is um, where if you would like to come back to find that recording, it will be linked here next week. So we are going to head into the grant system. If you have an account already, you can just enter your login information. Um, you can also click the Create New Account button if you know that you do not have an account in here already. If you're not sure if you have an account or not, please talk to us and we can let you know um, if there is something in our system already and get you connected with that. But here I am going to log in. So when you are returning to the grant system, you when you log in, you'll come to this applicant dashboard page. And if you want to apply for a grant, you'll click this apply button right here. If you are entering the system for the first time, you will come directly to this apply page. Um, what you'll need to do next is scroll through to find the grant program that you are looking for. As you see, we do have a lot available, but just Keep scrolling and you'll find the one you want. We'll take a look at the Emerging Artist application. If you just want to look at the application without actually starting one, you can look at the click on this preview button. Otherwise, you can just click Apply right over here, which is what we're going to do. So once you get into the application, um, we have a couple of new buttons this year that I'm just going to point out. Um, one is this Copy Previous Answers button. So if you have worked on an application in the system before um, and you click this, it'll bring up everything that you have done in here before and you can choose which other application you'd like to copy answers from. And it will copy over the answers to any questions that are the same between your um, old application and the new one that you're starting. We also have this collaborate button. Um, if you would like somebody to be working on your application with you, or maybe you're just asking them to proofread it for you, you can click on this collaborate button. You can put the person's email address there and um, choose what level of permission you'd like to give them. Put a little message here saying what you would like them to do. Um, that will just send them an email. They will be given a link. All they'll need to do is come up with a password. They don't need to um, create a whole full account in order to collaborate with you on your application. So in the application, our first question here is a name of your project. It does not need to be anything fancy, just so you know which project this is and we know. Um, then you'll put in how much you're going to request. You'll probably want to save this um, until the end after you have done your budget form. We have links here to those guidelines again that were also available on the website along with the Word document with the application questions. Um, we note that a lot of the narrative fields have a really big character limit allowed um, and we are not expecting you to use all that up so please don't feel like you have to um, necessarily get anywhere near this number. We just want to make sure that if there is some question where you feel like you really need to give a lot of information, you have that space. But otherwise, um, our grant reviewers appreciate concise answers to these questions. Um, and the evaluation score sheet used by those grant panelists is available here as well. So here you'll start out describing what you would like to do in the project you are proposing. Uh, this next question is about artistic vision. So if your project is about producing some sort of new work, um, what vision do you have for the project? Um, what are you trying to say through this? Is there a particular aesthetic that you're going for? Um, what draws you to this medium that you're working in? So just kind of having a, a 
more focused vision of what you're trying to accomplish artistically. If the project you're doing is instead um, attending a workshop or a conference, you don't need to answer this question. And if it is that um, workshop type project here, you can describe more about that opportunity and uh, qualifications of the instructors, for instance. Um, we've got a field here where you can upload some information. And if you want, enter the website for either that instructor or the actual study opportunity that you're planning to attend. Here's where you will enter the start and end dates that we talked about before. Our next section is the budget form. Um, what you'll do is click this link to download an Excel budget form, which you will fill out, save to your computer, and then uh, upload into the application. So in your budget, you've just got a whole bunch of lines where you can describe uh, all of the costs involved in your project, whether those are supplies or time for yourself or mileage. Uh, if you're planning to compensate yourself for the, your time, it helps to put in, um, I'm gonna be spending this many hours at so much per hour. So um, we know where, um, that total came from, or if you are traveling somewhere and paying yourself mileage, how many miles is it at what rate? Um, you could, it just helps to be very specific here. If you do run out of room while trying to be very specific, there is a narrative field back in the application where you can include some more information. So this will total all of your costs for you. Um, here it just reminds you the maximum amounts that you can request. So then you'll put in your total grant request amount. If the project that you're doing will cost more than what you're allowed to request, we ask that you fill in down here um, where that additional funding will come from. And most often it's just coming um, directly from yourself as the artist. Um, but it's a good idea to really include all of the costs, even if the grant is not going to cover all of them. Um, so then you would save your budget form and then um, upload it into your application. So you would just um, choose your file there and it will add that for you. Here's that budget narrative field that we talked about if there are details that just don't fit into that budget spreadsheet. This next section is on um, demonstrating your experience and skill in your art form. So we ask that you provide an art related resume. Um, so this would be your artist activities only, um, not where you're currently working, et cetera. But um, your resume should include things like any training that you've had, whether that was formal or informal um, exhibitions or equivalent if it's a different discipline, um, awards, commissions, anything of yours that's been published, et cetera. You can enter your um, artist's website address here. Um, if you do folk or traditional art, and that's what your project is based on, um, we ask that you explain your connection to the cultural community that that art form comes from and explain what kind of recognition you and your work have from that community. Um, the next section is all samples of your work, and there are multiple ways to do this. One, we have um, three upload fields here, um, which are each pretty good sized. Um, so you can put um, images, written materials, etc., in these upload fields. 
um, if you have multiple images that you're trying to upload, keep in mind that each field will only allow you to upload one file. So if you want to submit up to the 10 images that um, is allowed here, you will need to combine some of those into a PDF or even as simple as pasting a bunch of them into a Word document, Word document so that it's just one file that you're uploading here. Um, and then the other method is you can put web addresses here. So if you have um, videos on YouTube of yourself performing, that is where um, you can link us to those. Um, we have this box here. If you can choose to check or not, if you um, want to allow us to use any of the samples you provided in some of our informational or marketing materials. For instance, if we are announcing what grants we have awarded, we would include um, an image of one of your work samples if you have checked this box. Um, I will also note we have some guidelines of what to include for different types of samples that you're providing. Um, there's no penalty for submitting more than these guidelines, but just keep in mind that if you do exceed those uh, limits, it may not all get looked at. And as you're working on this, if you're having any trouble getting um, your samples either uploaded or linked here, please contact us and we can help you with that. The next section in the application is all about um, your growth as an artist. So it asks, where are you now in your artistic career? What have you been doing up to this point? Um, and then how will this project contribute to your growth as an artist? So we really wanna see that this particular project will be having a big impact, impact on you. Um, next is just some data that we are required to collect. This whole section does not have any bearing on your application. Um, number of artists, you should have at least one for yourself. And then if you are um, presenting your work in any way, the estimated audience for that. Um, here we've got a bunch of links to codes. Um, these couple here just tell you which code to enter. But um, to access some of the other ones, if you just click the link, it'll give you a list of codes and you'll just find the one that fits what you are doing and fill that in the field there. Um, then we ask both for your legal name and if um, there's either a former name under which you've applied for grants or a name that you're also known as um, and then which name you would like us to use for publicity. And finally, um, you will check this box to agree that all information here is accurate and type in your name as your signature. So um, when you get to the bottom, you can choose to either save your application or submit it. For now, we are going to save. Um, and you'll notice when we did that, it came up with um, this whole list of questions that we have not answered. So that helps you kind of keep track of how far you are. Um, you'll not be allowed to submit your application until all of these required questions have been completed. So that takes you right back to keep working. Um, then we're gonna go back to our dashboard. And here now is this application that we just started to get back into it. You'll just click edit application here. Um, this is the same place where if you're awarded a grant and you come back here, um, your contract will be there and your final report. That's where you can complete those. We'll just pause again for a moment for any questions. I will unmute you all for a couple minutes or if there's something that you'd like to type into that chat window. 
while I'm waiting to see if any questions come through, um, I was just going to add that we were looking at the emerging artist application and the one for established career artists is very similar, although it also asks um, and requires you to be sharing your work in some way. So as an emerging artist, um, you are not required to have a show or any other kind of presenting your work. Um, though we do require that for the established career artists. Um, however, we don't necessarily uh, require you to have that um, presentation piece within the period of your grant. If you um, are doing your final report and say, um, I have a show lined up next fall at X gallery, uh, that will fulfill that requirement. I'm not seeing any questions coming in, so we are going to continue on. Um, just some tips to think about as you're getting started working on your application. It's really good to uh, start early so that you have plenty of time to gather all of the things that you will need and get any questions answered for us. Um, find all of those work sample pieces, etc. Um, make sure to read the guidelines carefully. Also, it's have a lot of different parts in some of the questions, so make sure you're reading the questions fully and answering all of those parts. Like we talked about before, keep your answers really clear and concise. Um, we do want to make sure that you're fully answering the question, but as we said before, there's no need to worry about um, filling up those whole text boxes. It's also really good to assume that the people reviewing your grant don't know anything about you or your project or the work that you generally do. Uh, we have reviewers coming from around the whole region, so um, it is very likely that they will not have heard of your art. Um, also good to have somebody proofread your application, um, especially if it's someone who does not know a lot about um, what you have been doing with your art. That's a good check to see if you have fully explained something uh, well enough for someone who is not familiar what, with what you are doing. Um, I see I had another question um, about the community collaboration grant um, from somebody who just joined. And we did talk about that a little bit. It is not available in this round that is coming up in January. We have um, expended all of the funds for that program for this year, but it will be available again next year. So it's a good idea to call us to talk about your project before starting an application. Um, if you just want to run something by us, see if it's something that's eligible, um, make sure that you're applying under the right uh, category, uh, we can help you with that. Or if you run into any questions while you're filling out your application, um, just contact us and we can help you with that. Um, finally, if you um, let us know before submitting your application, um, we can take a look at it before you submit it, um, let you know if you're missing anything. Um, and we can do that for sure up to two weeks before the deadline. After that point, we can't guarantee that we will be able to get a look at it, but that can be really helpful as well. Uh, so what happens once you submit an application? Uh, first, SMOC staff will review it for eligibility and completeness. Make sure you have everything there that you're start date and your expenses are eligible. Um, if we see anything at that point that um, is an eligibility concern, we will contact you and you'll have 48 hours to remedy whatever those issues are. Um, next, all of those um, grants from that round will go to a panel of individuals from around the region. They will discuss and score the applications based on the criteria for each of those programs. 
And then finally, our board of directors will approve um, the final funding allotments based on the recommendations that they got from that grant review panel. So here's just a look at the criteria used for scoring for the emerging and established career artists. The reviewers are looking at the artist's excellence of work and demonstration of exceptional talent. That is worth by far the most points at 18. Uh, the project's contribution to the artist's professional growth is worth 10 points. And finally, the feasibility of the project worth three points. So um, things like, have you given yourself enough time? Do you have the correct um, supplies and tools for what you're planning to do, et cetera? Um, then for the community collaboration grants, we're again looking at the artist's excellence of work for 18 points, but also the artistic merit of what's planned for the community project, also 18 points. Then um, 10 points for the actual community collaboration, 10 points for the project's contribution to the applicant's artistic growth, feasibility, and an outcome evaluation plan. Um, so you will need to um, not only have a good score all, overall, but you will need to pass on each of these individual criteria to be considered for funding. If your grant is awarded, you'll have to do an online contract within 30 days. After you've completed that contract, you'll receive 80% of your grant award before your start date. So you'll get 80% of your grant up, up front. Then you will get the remaining 20% of your grant award after your project and your final report are completed. You'll need to acknowledge the grant funds on any publicity or promotional materials that you will be putting out. Um, if you are doing the community collaboration grant, you will need to include the Minnesota Legacy logo, and we will make sure to send you both the exact credit lines and logos, whatever is specifically needed for your um, grant, depending on the source of funds. Uh, you'll need to do a final report within 60 days after your project end date. So it's a good idea when you're getting started on your project to go into the final report within the grant system and take a look at the kind of information you'll need to gather, um, costs, um, outcomes, attendance, et cetera. So we are here in our office in Marshall, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., not always over lunch, so it's good to check that. Um, you can give us a call anytime or email us. We are here to um, help you have the best applications that you can have. We are, we as staff don't have any say in who gets funded or not. We're just acting as your advocate. So please uh, contact us if you have any questions. Um, that was it for the actual presentation today. I will again unmute everyone if there is something that you'd like to talk about, and I will stay on for a while here if there's any specific projects you'd like to talk through. Otherwise, thank you for joining us today.